So no one's going to tell me other people are, are the arbiters of truth. No one is the arbiter of truth, not even me. Not you, not anyone in, as an individual. The truth exists independently of our perception. It is our goal to align our perception with the truth or with that which is. Secondly, the conclusion is, conclusions of government, media, religion, doctors, and scientists cannot be violently pushed upon others. That is called worldview violence. That is what I stand against. I stand against all forms of violence. I want there to be voluntary interaction among human beings. That is why I am a voluntarist slash anarchist. It means no rulers, no masters, no one acting as a commander of others, no one acting as a ruler of others. There are still rules which are called natural law, which are the moral laws of the universe. But there are no rulers. There is not a ruling class and there is not a slave class. And that is what the people out there in our world today believe there is. And they believe there's moral legitimacy to it. Their conclusions do not mean that it is the truth. And their conclusions cannot be violently pushed upon others. That is what is unfortunately taking place in our world. And we need to apply the name to it. It's called worldview violence. And it should not be accepted any more than physical violence should because worldview violence is going to lead to physical violence and lead to the stripping away of human rights. And we cannot allow that to happen. Let's jump into the second portion of the presentation here today, the real pandemics. So I've covered what I want to talk with you today about worldview violence and what it is. Now let's talk about the real pandemics in our society. And oh, there are many real pandemics. They're not what most people think that they are, but they are very real pandemics taking place in our world. And they are worldwide, ladies and gentlemen. They are not isolated pockets of illness in the human psyche. They are worldwide pandemics for sure. So let's jump into what these are. The lack of spirituality, the lack of true spirituality is probably the number one worldwide pandemic. And people will hear this and they'll say, oh, that's a religious statement. No, it isn't. I stand against organized religion. I stand against dogmatic religion. You know, I don't believe any of that is true. I don't believe in atheism either. These are two false paradigms. As I've said over and over again on this show, it's a dialectic. It's a conscious, a dialectic in consciousness to keep people away from the truth. Both of these paradigms are designed mental schisms. It's a designed mental schism, a socially engineered mental schism. And this is known as the Hegelian dialectic to keep a lack of true spirituality in most people's life. Okay, that's what it is designed to do, and that's where we're at. This is a pandemic. Most people lack any form of true spirituality in their life. Whether they are left-brain dominant atheists, whose worldview characteristics are that they believe matter is primary and that there's no such thing as God or spirit, that the material world is all there is, that only physical laws exist, but there are no laws that govern behavioral consequence, namely natural law, that science, quote unquote, is the arbiter of truth, not real science or real truth discovery, but science as comes down from official government funded science and scientific institutions. And the consciousness is either purely mechanical or meaningless altogether. A totally left brain dominant worldview that is not going to get anyone closer to the truth by one iota, okay, not by one sliver. And then we have the right brain dominant religionist, you know, who believes in any of the organized religious dogmas of the world and believes that their worldview characteristics are that they believe spirit is primary and God is all powerful. The material world is evil or should be aesthetically shunned. God demands strict human obedience to his arbitrary and often conflicting set of rules. And the goals and goals in the physical world shouldn't be even focused on because rather we should focus on the promised afterlife with God. So ultimately in this worldview, meaning uh, action becomes meaningless. You see, both of these are to get people to basically get no closer to the truth. They're designed to steer people away from the truth. And they're ultimately designed to steer people into cul-de-sacs of meaningless action or inaction altogether. That is what they, these two worldviews are designed to do and keep people with no true spirituality. The next real pandemic is the pandemic of fear. And that's what we're seeing play out 
in our world in a huge way. People with no knowledge, just completely giving into fear. And the biggest fear is fear of the unknown because fear of the unknown is what holds people back from knowledge and higher awareness. See, if you fear knowledge because you fear what you might discover, it is going to create a feedback loop of fear because fear comes from lack of knowledge. Those who are informed are not in fear. Does it sound like I'm in a state of fear, ladies and gentlemen? The reason I'm not in a state of fear is because I'm in an extremely high level of knowledge and awareness. And when you're in an extremely high level of knowledge and awareness, you need fear nothing. Ignorance is what creates fear. Refusal of truth is what creates fear. I have no such fear because I've accepted what truth is and I've aligned my perception to it. But we're, here's where we're at, folks, societally. So it's not the coronavirus that is scary. It's how brainwashed and easily manipulated the masses of people can become. Truer words were never spoken. You know, that's what we really should be concerned about. And guess what? We could, could be doing something about it, but how many of us are? Okay? You know, we could be stepping up and trying to morally educate people, but you know what? That, that, vo that chorus of voices is extremely weak compared to the amount of voices that are constantly speaking the lie to everyone within earshot. That's all you got to do is ask yourself, which voice is more omnipresent and the loudest and the most powerful? Is it the voice of truth or is it the voice of deception and lies? And I think if you're being honest with yourself, you will answer that question honestly and truthfully. Ignorance is the next pandemic. Again, it's the thing that leads people into deeper and deeper states of fear, which is what holds consciousness back. Ignorance is the refusal of truth, which leads to cowardness and inaction. You know, in this whole alleged virus pandemic, I have tried to give people like information and books and videos to watch. You know, I've sent people links to the Invisible Rainbow book by Arthur Furstenberg, which talks about, you know, how diseases really develop in the body, how we are electrical beings, how, you know, uh, things turn on or off in the body depending on environment and depending on toxicity around the body. Hardly anybody will read it. Hardly anybody will look into it. I've tried to have, have discussions with people after sending them documents like this or, or the book called What Really Makes You Ill, Why Everything You Thought You Knew About Disease Is Wrong. Ask people, please look into some of this. Let's have a discussion on it. I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. You know, I've read these and tried to understand what the authors are saying, what they're putting forward as an alternative worldview, and I'd like to have a discussion on it. People won't even look into it. That's called ignorance. That's called thinking you know enough, thinking you've been informed enough, and your ego being in the way of you taking in new information. Whether you accept it or not is irrelevant. It's taking it in first that is your job. Looking at an other perspective, then making up your mind through a truth discovery process about whether it's accurate or not. Most people won't even go through the first step of the trivium, which is get the information first. That's the grammar step, which has to come first. You can't put anything before grammar. And look, we could talk about 10,000 books on the topic. These are just two I decided to put on my slide because I think they're excellent ones. You know, how many people are doing this? All too few is the answer, folks. All too few. And that's the problem. So they're staying in that place of ignorance and that keeps driving their fear. And what does it lead to? It leads to inaction because people aren't informed and they have no courage. They lack any sense of courage in their life. Cowardice is the next real pandemic that we are experiencing. And it's everywhere. You see people cowering in, as I like to call it, cowering under the staircase in the kingdom of the self. They don't just have coward to act, cowardice to act externally to apply will, willpower in the world. They don't even have, they don't even have courage internally in their own self. They haven't developed it to look at what's true and challenge their own worldview and belief system because ultimately they're cowards of what they may find and they don't want the responsibility that goes along with knowing. And I've said it a million times, folks, God hates cowardice. 
Call God whatever you want. I don't give a damn if you're uncomfortable with that term. Call it creation. Call it the underlying intelligence in the universe. It doesn't make a difference with what you call it. The force which put all the laws of the universe into effect, including behavioral laws of the universe or moral laws of the universe, hates cowardice. And there's a reason. It wants evolutionary progress in consciousness to move forward. It wants to evolve. The universe wants to evolve. And cowardice is the force which, one of the forces, one of the biggest forces which stagnates evolutionary progress in consciousness. The universe hates cowardice. The universe hates cowards. And I just like to challenge even the viewing audience at the risk of even insulting anyone, folks. Get as offended as you like. How many of you have courageously put the word out there publicly with your real name on it? I'd suggest less than 1%. Okay? I'm going to scream loud and proud. My name is Mark Passio of whatonearthishappening.com and I'm going to provide testimony to the truth of what is taking place in our world right here and now on our planet. That's my real name and I'm not afraid. You know how many people are actually doing that? A piss ant few. Okay? That's the answer. A piss in a pot, tiny little, little droplet, and it's not good enough. It's not good enough. We should be doing way better and way more at this time period and not leaving it to so-called experts. Don't even leave it to me. I should be drowned out in a, in a sea, of course, of voices teaching natural law by this point. Okay? When I'm one of the handful doing it. And I mean a handful. At best. The ancient philosopher Thucydides said that the society that separates its scholars from its warriors will have its thinking done by cowards and its fighting by fools. And we're there, folks. This is that time of judgment where we are there. So many people who consider themselves well-informed are total cowards. And the people who have, are absolute know-nothing, just jar-headed, just shit for brains, actually are out there saying that they're going to do the fighting on behalf of society. I mean, you guys are utter jarhead clowns. Okay? And the people who believe that you're fighting for our freedom are even bigger clowns. Apathy is the next worldview pandemic. It's really the, the final one of all. This is the one that really makes the slavery system continue and perpetuate. Now, most of this listening audience, viewing audience, is not in a state of apathy. You guys do care about what's going on. The problem is you need to convert that care into right action, into courage and right action by putting your voices out there publicly and not being afraid. Make the people who are claiming authority as real afraid. Okay? We need to turn the tables and they need to be afraid. Okay? First of all, they are afraid of the truth. They're afraid of the truth getting out there that their whole system's a big crock of crap and never had any moral legitimacy to it. But apathy is the next big pandemic. And it is the death of care to say, I don't care about what's going on, to say, I don't care about the loss of freedoms, is what perpetuates humanity enslavement and keeps us in the prison as an entire world, as an entire species. I don't care creates the prison for everyone. It creates the prison planet. These two images are exactly equal. It's a mathematic equation that works that way 100% of the time flawlessly according to law in the universe. I don't care creates a prison for us all. So in the last couple minutes, let's get into what I call solutions. It's actual spiritual solutions. This is a spiritual problem. Let's look at what the real solutions are. We need a development worldwide of true spirituality, not atheism, not the rejection of all spirituality, not the rejection of the spiritual aspect of our being, but also not rigid, organized religious dogmatism. 
But neither one of those things leads to the truth. They are dialectics to divide people and keep them away from the truth. Real spirituality, first and foremost, the first tenet of real spirituality is that it cannot include the belief in the moral legitimacy of authority and government. And if there's not enough time to just fl entirely flesh out this dynamic in this short presentation, this is a short form presentation, folks, can't get to it all in one. But I go into this extensively in my seminars called Natural Law, the Real Law of Attraction and how to apply it in your life and Streetwise Spirituality. What does it truly mean to be awake? And if you're new to my work or you haven't watched these seminars, you need to watch them in their entirety, perhaps multiple times, and really absorb the knowledge deeply that is in these two seminars. Because so this is what self-mastery is all about, understanding the laws of the universe, understanding natural law, and then actually applying that true spirituality in one's life through our behaviors, through our actions, in the right way, through right action. The next way out of these real pandemics is self-respect. True respect, true looking again at, at the qualities of our self as an individual. Self-respect is the true healer. You want to cure the real pandemic? You want to cure the real human sickness? Then apply the true healer, which is self-respect first and foremost. This is the development of internal courage to look at the truth and then to speak the truth publicly. Not just to your family and friends where you think it's safe. It needs to be out there publicly in a courageous way where you're telling people, I'm not afraid. You know, here's a self-respect starter kit for the viewing audience. Uh, for anybody listening, okay? And I know a lot of the people who are, are, you know, in attendance at this conference here today virtually have already done these things. But I'm talking about for anyone watching after the fact you know, through the recorded presentation on the internet. Turn off the lying, fear-mongering, state-controlled media. It is an affront to self-respect. Stop believing that others have the right to command you. There is no such right. There is so much moral right. So that's my timer to say, wrap it up. So let's get to the last thing. It's the development of true courage. Okay, this is the way out of the real pandemic, folks. True courage. Courage is the universe's protection. It's universal protection. We talk about, you know, protective equipment, you know, to, to shield us from illness. This is the real universal protection to shield us from spiritual illness. That's what courage is. Be bold and mighty forces will come to your aid. The people who are stepping up, the people who are saying, no, we're not going to have this. We're going to go back to our lives. We're not going to take government mandates. We're not going to take government commands because you don't have the right to command us. We are free and we're going to act like it. You know, stepping into that kind of courage creates the universe's protection. I'm protected because I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of what can be done to me in the physical domain. And you know what real protection is going to come in the form of? Stepping into the courage to teach natural law. You want to talk about an even much higher, much higher level of protection. People say to me, Mark, are you afraid what these people might do to you? Not a bit. Not for a second. They better be afraid of what, if it comes down to physical altercation, I'll do. Or other people who are going to defend their rights and freedom will do. Okay? They're, I'm not afraid of what they're going to do. Okay? And you know why? I have the protection of universal law. I have the protection of the creator of the universe. You want to say that's a religious statement? No, absolutely it is not. That's a spiritual understanding. If you exercise courage for the right things and you teach the right things and you teach natural law, mighty forces of creation will come to your assistance and aid in your life, in all your endeavors. And that is where my protection comes from. We don't want it to come down to the lost word, ladies and gentlemen, uh, to the last word. That's why we have to say the lost word, okay? We want to say the lost word. We don't want it to have to come down to the last word of physical rebellion because it's rapidly going in that direction and that's going to get very, very messy. That doesn't go with surgical precision, ladies and gentlemen. That goes with extreme messiness and a lot of innocents get caught up in that. Okay, if you study history, you will understand that. So we have to say the lost word, which is no, and we need to fall in love with it. This is the lost word. We have to say no to evil. 
We have to say no to authoritarianism. We have to say no to worldview violence. We have to say no to external control. No one has the right to externally control, rule, or command us. And we need to fall in love with that word. That is a vibratory energy of courage and protection, the word no. No, you don't own me. No, I am not your slave. No, you don't have the right to command me and others. No one does. So folks, it looks like this, the lost word. Through the knowledge of natural law, a truly awakened human being is finally able to speak the lost word, which is no. No is the word of all power. And only when we say no to those who would claim to be our owners do we stop externalizing our power and in doing so reclaim all of our natural rights. Defeating the real pandemics which plague humanity requires the development and application of true knowledge, true care, and true courage. And that happens when we start to say no to those who would claim to be the rulers of our lives. Now, when you look at the word no, ladies and gentlemen, you realize it's just another form of the word on. It's just on flipped upside down. Because when we say the lost word no to those who consider themselves our authority, we are truly embracing and turning on the light inside each and every one of us. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your time and attention.